Mr. Jackson? Excuse me, Mr. Jackson. Oh, hello, hello. You and the doors, right? Yes, and I broke the handle on my bag, the one I carry my books and things in. Can you fix it? Well, now, let's see. Well, I can patch it up for you, all right, I guess, but uh, right now I have to take care of this boiler. Anyway, you, you, you got to get back to your room, don't you? Seems to me lunchtime's just about up. Well, but you always fix things. Look, well, I'll tell you what. You bring the bag down here right after school's out, and I'll take care of it then. I'll probably be over there in my little cubby hole there by the furnace room, or else I'll still be here working with this boiler. Okay? Okay, Mr. Jackson. See you later. Hear something, Sarah? Mr. Jackson just asked me to come down to his room after school. Mr. Jackson, the janitor. The other five presents Mr. Frederick O'Neill in The Janitor. best I can do is pound these studs in and hope they hold. Thank goodness, you must have been carrying solid lead in this bag instead of books. How did you break it? I was swinging it around my head. Your book bag? What for? I don't know. I was just doing it. Do you sleep here, Mr. Jackson? Sleep? <laughs> no, they let me out every evening, as long as I promise to come back the next morning. I live over on Brush Street. Brush Street? That's where the colored people live, isn't it? Well, where else you expect me to live? Oh... Do you like to be a janitor, Mr. Jackson? Uh, I don't know. Well, now, some days I do and some days I don't. I like to be around the school and the children. Are you awfully old, Mr. Jackson? Old? The next thing you know, I'm going to be 45. All right, here you are. Guess this is about the best I can do for you. Now, you better not go swinging it around your head anymore. Your daddy's going to have to buy you a new one. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Jackson. You're welcome. You better scoot on home now before your mama gets word about how late you are. Hello? Who? Oh, yes, Mrs. Bailey. I've heard Emily mention your Sarah, of course. No, as a matter of fact, Emily isn't home from school yet. I was just beginning to wonder about it. Why do you ask? Oh, dear heaven. Oh, surely a thing like that couldn't happen, not to Emily. Sarah says Emily definitely told her this man asked her to come down to his room after school. Well, I can't help worrying, Mrs. Bailey. All right, thank you very much. I'll have to hang up now. Not to Emily. Not to my little Emily. Please, please, not to Emily. Hello. I want to speak to Mr. Dawes, please. Hello, Harry. This is an emergency. Emily's in trouble. Oh, Emily. What's the matter? Oh, Emily, did you go down in the basement to see that awful man? Huh? You can tell me the truth, baby. Nobody's going to blame you. Did you go down there to that man's room? You mean Mr. Jackson? He fixed my bag. Oh, my baby. What did he do? He fixed my bag. Here, see? The handle came loose, and he put these things in to make it stay together again. What else did he do? Well, he was hammering on the boiler. Oh, my poor, poor, innocent darling. You don't even know, do you? Don't know why. Never mind, you never mind. It's a blessing you don't. Well, now, you'd better run along upstairs and change your clothes, dear. Here comes your father. Pop? How come? He never gets home till after Well, dark. he's home a little early today. Run along now. Okay. Elaine? In here, Harry. What's the trouble? Where's Emily? She's upstairs, changing. 
It's all right, Harry. Well, if it's all right, what am I doing here? You call me and tell me something terrible's happened to Emily, and I walk out on an important conference and rush home, and all you have to say is, it's all right, Harry. What's all right? Can you tell me that, at least? Please, keep your voice down. She'll hear you. So she'll hear me. I don't want to frighten her. The poor little thing's been through enough already, whether she knows it or not. Been through what, for heaven's sake? Do you know Mr. Jackson over at Emily's school? Well, not socially. I know he's the janitor. Well, that's what I mean. Well, this afternoon, he talked Emily into coming down to his room in the basement after school. He what? I don't know what he bribed her with. Something about mending her book bag or something like that. Anyway, the poor, innocent little thing went down there and... Well, what happened? Is she all right? Please, please. Yes, she's all right. I told you. I don't think she's harmed at all. She doesn't even seem to be frightened. Well, how do you know? How do you know what kind of threats he made? How do you know what he said he'd do to her if she talked? I don't think so, Harry. I really don't think so. Well, we'll mighty soon find out. Emily! Harry, no. Yes, Pop? Come down here, please, Emily. I want to talk to you. Oh, Harry, I wish you wouldn't. I don't think she even realizes what a narrow escape she's had. And if you frighten her now... Nonsense. Oh, Harry, please. You just can't let a thing like this ride, Elaine. There are lots of other little girls in that school besides our Emily. And if that's the kind of a man this Jackson is, then not one of them is safe. What do you want, Pop? Sit down, Emily. There, on the couch. I want to talk to you. Okay. Now, Emily, I want you to tell me exactly what happened when you went down to Mr. Jackson's room after school today. Well, gee, he fixed my bag. And what else? Well, we talked. About what? I don't know. About where he lived and how old he is and did he sleep in his cubbyhole down there in the basement. I see. And does he sleep there? No, he sleeps home. Did he touch you in any way? Touch me? Put his hands on you. Oh, I don't know. I don't remember. Maybe he patted my head. He pats kids' heads sometimes. Pat's kids' heads. He likes kids. He's always saying how he likes kids. He likes kids. Did he put his arm around you, Emily? I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, Think hard now. This is very, very important. Are you sure he didn't put his arm around you? Well, I think maybe he put his hand on my shoulder. I guess maybe he could have put his arm around me. I guess he did, yes. Yes. What are you doing, Harry? For information? I want the number of Mr. James Hunter. He lives somewhere in the Wheatley section. I I don't have the exact address. Yes, thank you. You're calling the principal? Gee whiz, Pop. Do you think you should, Harry? Yes. Yes, information, that's the one. Thank you. Yes, Elaine, I think I should. I very definitely think I should. Now, you just be quiet. Uh, Is this Mr. Hunter? Uh, Mr. Hunter, my name is Harry Dawes. I'm Emily Dawes' father. Yes, in the fourth grade. I want to report to you, Mr. Hunter, that this afternoon your janitor, Jackson, tried to assault my daughter. Young Andy Stedman told me you wanted to see me, Mr. Hunter. Yes, yes. Come in, Jackson. Sit down. Uh, Thank you, sir. Hope it won't take long, though. That ball is acting up again. I don't think I ought to leave it uh, too long. You know, Mr. Hunter, I think before school starts next year... We can talk about that another time. Okay, Mr. Hunter. Jackson, how long have you been janitor here? Oh, well, it's uh, going on 19 years now. It's the only job I had since I came out of the Army. And I've been the principal now for eight years. Taught just in sixth grade before that. I've been here altogether almost 13 years. Yes, sir. Time flies, all right. Jackson, 
Did you have a little girl down in your room after school yesterday afternoon? Well, yes, sir, I did. A little girl by the name of uh, Emily Dawes, fourth grade, I believe. Busted the handle on a book bag and wanted me to fix it. Did you fix it? <laughs> well, best I could. It'll last a few more weeks if she don't mistreat it. What are you asking me about it for, Mr. Hunter? Because Mr. Dawes, Emily's father, called me last night and told me that you tried to assault his daughter. What? Assault his daughter? Well, that's not true, Mr. Hunter. I didn't get you in here to ask you if it was true. I don't think I have to. I got you in here to tell you that Mr. Dawes has made the accusation and I just, I can't ignore it. No, I guess not. She came downstairs to see me just about the time the lunch hour was up. And I was working on the ball at the time, and she said a book bag had busted, and would I fix it? I told her it was just about the end of the lunch period, and she'd have to get back to her room. But I had to work on that boiler. But if she wanted to, she could bring the bag down to my cubbyhole after school, and I'd try and fix it for her then. Well, she brought it, and I fixed it, and I, I swear to you, Mr. Hunter, I never laid a hand on her, ever dreamed of such a thing. Yes, I know. But I have to suspend you until all this is settled, Jackson. Suspend me? I can't let you continue on here with this thing hanging over your head. On account of all the other little girls I might attack. Oh, you and I know it's absurd, Jackson, but you can't expect everybody else to agree with us. No, sir, I guess not. Will you be at home if I want to get in touch with you? Now, that I don't think I can promise. If you want to be sure I'll be handy in case you need me, Mr. Hunter, why don't you just get me tossed in jail? Harry? Hmm? Have you noticed the way Emily's been acting this evening? What's she been up to now? She hasn't been up to anything. She just seems tired and, oh, I don't know what... Apathetic. Well, that's what comes of keeping her out of school today. I told you she should have gone. But, Harry, after yesterday... Now, that's all taken care of. You heard what I told Hunter. Oh, yes, I know. But... Tomorrow she goes to school, and that's mm. all there is to it. You can't keep her out forever because of this. Well, I suppose not, but just the thought of it frightens oh, me. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Emily? Yes? You stop practicing. Is your time up? It's almost up, Pop. And I don't feel like practicing anymore. Aren't you feeling well this evening, dear? Maybe you ought to have a dose of... I'm all right. I just don't want to practice anymore, that's all. I feel fine. You shouldn't have stayed out of school today. You'll feel better tomorrow. Why? Because you're going back to school tomorrow, that's why. I'm not! I won't go back to that awful old place! I'm never going back! Now, it won't do you any good to put on a show for us. You're going back tomorrow, and that's all there is to it. I will it's a terrible place, and the people are terrible. Oh, Emily, dear, all your little friends go there. They're not my friends. I hate them. I hate everybody in that awful old place. Oh, dear, wouldn't you know somebody would have to come just now? Now, I want you to straighten up this minute, young lady. I'll have to see who it is. Can I go to my room, please? You'll go nowhere until we finish this. Now, you listen. Oh. Uh, good evening, Mrs. Dawes. My name's Ernest Jackson. I'm the janitor over the school. Yes, I know. Well, is it all right if I come in? Well, maybe it would be better if you didn't right now. Emily sort of... It, it, uh... It's very important to me, Mrs. Dawes, and I, I think it's important to Emily, too, ma'am. She's a nice little girl, and I don't think all this is doing her any good. I know that, but... Yeah, well, I just have to insist, Mrs. Dawes. I'd like to speak to Mr. Dawes if I could, and to Emily, too, I... I just have to talk to Emily. Are they in there, Mrs. Dawes? I think I can hear them. Well, and all right. You just have to learn that things like this must be faced. It doesn't do any good. Who are you? It's what? Mr. Jackson, Harry, from Emily's school. Well, what do you think you're doing here? Well, I, I came to talk with you, Mr. Dawes, and with Emily. Well, of all the unmitigated gall, you well, get I, out of here. I'll be glad to go, Mr. Dawes, but... Not until you listen to what I've got to say, you and Emily. Well, now, we'll just see about that. What do you aim to do, Mr. Dawes? Hit me? Well, go ahead if it'll make you feel any better. It won't hurt me much. After all I've been through today, well, 
I'd hardly notice a bloody nose. Emily, you go up to your room. At once. Well, excuse me, sir, but... Emily's got to stay down here and listen to what I've got to say. Look at her. She's frightened to death of you. No, sir. No, sir. I don't think so. Uh, well, she's frightened, all right, but not of me. At least I don't believe so. Please let her go upstairs, Mr. Jackson. She's just a little girl. I'll stay if he wants me to, Mom. Thank you. Thank you. Is it is it all right if I sit down? You can sit down. <laughs> oh, thank you. Now, Emily... You've been in school how long now? Three whole years, is that right? I guess so. Now, in all that time, did you ever see me acting mean to any of the children? I guess not. Yeah, you know very well now. Now, now, now don't you? Yes. And sometimes I have trouble with the grown-ups, the teachers and the principal and people like that. But I never had a minute's trouble with the children in all the time I've been there. And you want to know why, Emily? You want to know why? I guess so. That's because I love children. Not anything dirty or nasty like some folks seem to think. I just, well, I just love children, that's all. I like to have them around me. Well, recess time's about the best time of all for me. I think I like it better than the kids do, even. I like to watch them play. You know, it's clean when children play. It's, it's, it's healthy. You know what happened to me today, Emily? Mr. Hunter sent me home from school. When it came recess time, I, I wasn't even there. I'm sorry, Mr. Jackson. Yes, yes, I expect you are. But that's not quite enough. You see, you've got to tell your daddy the truth. Oh, Mr. Jackson, don't be mad at me. Please, please don't be mad at me. Emily, what are you talking about? He didn't do anything. He wouldn't hurt me. Well, then, dear, why did you say? I, I didn't say. I didn't say. Everybody else kept saying. And all I ever said was yes, because that's what it seemed like everybody wanted me to say. But, Emily, <laughs> little Sarah Bailey told her mother, Mr. Jackson, tried to get you to come down to his room. Because that's what I told her. It's my fault. I told her and I made it sound wrong. I made it sound wrong. Oh, Mr. Jackson, please don't be mad at me. Oh, I'm not mad, Emily. How could I be mad at you? Well, well, I, I suppose we owe you an apology, Jackson. Well, Mr. Dawes, I'm going to ask you to come over to Mr. Hunter's house with me and tell him that. And that's how it happened, Mr. Hunter. In all fairness to Jackson here, I... I have to say that the only thing he did to Emily was repair her old book bag. I'm... I, I'm sorry about all the trouble. Yes, and so am I. I don't know if that makes up for anything, Jackson, but I am truly sorry. Well, things mostly don't get made up for anyway. Sorry is about the best anybody can do. You'll, uh, you'll start back to work in the morning, of course. I don't know. What? I don't know as I want to work here anymore. But, Jackson, you... Yeah, the thing is, Mr. Hunter, I don't know if I'm ever going to feel natural with another child after this. I don't know if I'm going to feel right anymore about trying to help a child with a problem. And if I can't do that, then... Well, I don't think a school's a place for me. Mr. Jackson... Maybe you don't feel that I have the right to ask it, but I, I wonder if you'd do me a favor. I can't uh, promise to, Mr. Dawes, but what is it? Go back to work tomorrow. And never mind about my conscience or my wife's, but think about Emily. After the things you told her tonight about what that school means to you, think what she's going to feel if... If you don't go back, she's going to carry that around with her for the rest of her life. Please, Mr. Jackson, go back tomorrow. Well... Now, Jackson, you'd better go home and get some sleep. You'll have to make an early start tomorrow. That boiler's had a whole day to get ahead of you. <laughs> yes, sir, I expect you're right.
Theater 5 has presented The Janitor, written by Fielden Farrington, produced and directed by Ted Bell. In the cast, Frederick O'Neill, Susan Melvin, Court Benson, Grace Matthews, and Joseph Bell. Audio engineers, Marty Folia and Neil Pulse. Sound technician, Ed Blaney. Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Vlastotsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. Executive producer for Theater 5, Mr. Lee Bowman. We invite your comments. Write to Theater 5, New York 23, New York. That's Theater 5, New York 23, New York. This is Fred Foy speaking. This has been an ABC Radio Network production.